Welcome to Ask Ms. Mears, where we answer your most burning questions and solve your most nagging problems. I won't always know the answer, but I'll know someone who will. It's 2021. How many of us can confidently say that as responsible adults, we are truly in charge of our bodies, our health, and its impact on our lives and on our future, and are not just leaving it all up to chance? The World Health Organization states that reproductive health implies that people are able to have a satisfying and safe sex life, and that they have the capability to reproduce and the freedom to decide if, when, and how often to do so, and that sexual health is fundamental to the overall health and well-being of indiv individuals, couples, and families, and to the social and economic development of communities and countries. Whoa! Helping us unpack all of this today so we can be proactive about it is the director of Roots of Health, a nonprofit organization empowering the youth and families in Palawan to lead healthy, reproductive lives, and which she co-founded in 2009 after she got her master's double degree in international affairs and public health from Columbia University in New York. Please welcome Amina Evangelista Swanpol. Hi. Hi, good morning. How are you? Morning. Happy Women's Month. Happy Women's Month. March is always a very exciting month for us. And I'm sure very busy. So how are you today? How's the reproductive health situation over there in Palawan? We're doing well. Um, you know, we're coming up now on the one-year anniversary of the COVID lockdown. Yes. And, right. you know, I think at this time last year, it was like the last normal week we had and we didn't know right, what was right. about to happen. And so we've kind of been reflecting on on the reproductive health situation one year on. Um, you know, when COVID first started, we had to close our clinics. Um, a lot of women weren't able to access the services that they would normally get from us. Um, but I'm pleased to say that about a year on now, we see that the levels of women coming for our services are about back to the same level, same number that we were seeing pre-COVID, which was about 100 women per day accessing our clinic. So um, we're really pleased to know that people are having access to services again. Yes, fingers crossed that things will be back to normal, whatever that will be soon. <laughs> so yes. uh, tell us briefly about Roots of Health and how it came to be. Why did you and your mom co-found it in... 2009. Sure. Well, we we started it basically because my mom um, had been teaching at Ateneo de Manila University for 30 years. And right. in 2000, she retired and moved to Palawan, started teaching at Palawan State University. And by the time that we were speaking about reproductive health, she was so frustrated now because after, you know, almost 40 years of teaching and again and again and again and again, her female students would confide in her, oh, ma'am, you know, we, I, I have to drop out because uh, my boyfriend came over and something happened and now I'm pregnant. And she was, you know, she was so frustrated that this was happening, one. But two, she was also really concerned about the fact that parang they didn't even have the language to talk about what was happening to them. It's like they didn't realize that sex is a thing and that if you have unprotected sex you can get pregnant and you know that there are ways to protect yourself so that you don't and so at that stage i had just finished um a master's degree in public health and i had been studying hiv so i was very focused on sexual and reproductive health so she asked if i would move back to the philippines come to palawan with my husband who's also a teacher and start an organization that would provide comprehensive sex ed to students. And um, my husband, Marcus, was also game to do this. So we, um, you know, we packed up all our stuff in New York and moved to Puerto Princesa and um, found out really quickly that there were, you know, more problems than just my mom's college students. Because, you know, in the Philippines and in Palawan, a lot of the unplanned pregnancies are happening much earlier, like when girls are 14 years old, 15 years old. So we started teaching in public high schools. And we also um, began providing this information in communities where there's a lot of community women who maybe only had until a third grade or fourth grade education. Um, we would provide them information about their reproductive health, their bodies, contraception and how it works. And 
when the women first started asking us for the services, you know, they said, now I understand my body, di na ako takot sa contraception, can you give it to me? That's when we hired our first nurse. And uh, from that point, we've been um, an organization that provides not only comprehensive information about reproductive health, but also high quality, non-judgmental clinical services. Right. Emphasis on the non-judgmental. I seem to have frozen, but can you hear me okay? Yes, so I can hear you. I'll just, I'll just continue to speak even if I'm frozen and just pretend that I'm moving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so 12, 12 years later, what can you say has changed and what is the progress that has been made over there? If There's any. been a lot. There's been a lot of progress, thankfully. Um, Palawan still has quite a high rate of unintended pregnancy, especially among adolescents, among teenagers. But um, overall, things have really improved, especially in Puerto Princesa City, where um, you know the the teen pregnancy rate has gone down by a third over the last decade, um, and we have a lot more conversations about sexual health with key stakeholders. So we've always gone directly to women, directly to girls, directly to young people. But in the last few years, we've also been spending a lot of time talking to the city health officials, provincial health, our stakeholder partners at BOH and DSWD and POPCOM, and basically gathering all the people that um, have something to do with reproductive health um, we call them the gatekeepers for young people. These are the people who basically, if we do our jobs right, we can help protect young people. So we've been working a lot with these stakeholder partners to try to change the systems in which we operate so that it's more conducive to discussions about reproductive health, being more open about it, so that young people don't have as much problems accessing services. Right. Uh, when we launched Cosmo in 1997, there wasn't much access to information about such things, right? It was pre-internet and, you know, you could only find this kind of information in Cosmo. And then decades later, with the advent of the internet and there's information that anyone can access, I'm not sure that overall the Pinay is more informed or more in charge of um, her reproductive health. Uh, what do you think is... Uh, the problem it's not even lack of information anymore yeah uh, you're right that there um there is a lot more information now but something we found is um there's not a lot of information that's in tagalog oh, that's changing okay. that's changing a little bit now um but you know there's so much information in english as you've noted but there's a lot of filipinas who aren't as comfortable in english um, and something that we found is we have a Facebook page for our clinic, and it's um, it's called UNK Clinic. It's Ugat ng Kalusugan Clinic, UNK Clinic. And we launched that and provided information mostly just about contraception, but also about um, periods and other things. And um, we made it a point that all of our information is in Tagalog. And once we launched it, we found that basically every week we were adding like a thousand new followers. And right wow. now, I think it has, I think it has eighty thousand followers. And we get questions from Pinays not just all over the country, but all over the world. You know, we wow. have Pinays who are living and working in other countries in Europe and the Middle East, who are also asking us their questions about their periods, about how do, how do the pills work, how do I do this, how do I do that. So, so I think one of the issues is that we need more resources in our local languages. Um, but then the other issue, which I think is just a fundamentally more difficult problem to, to overcome, is the fact that it's still taboo. It's, it's right. still, there's still this perception that um, Pinais don't do that. Pinais aren't like that. Um, you know, whatever that is, but, um, it, you know, so frequently that's that's the answer to us of people who don't want improved reproductive health systems is they say, hindi naman kailangan yan dito, hindi naman ganyan mga Pinay. And so we're trying to change that narrative and make it, you know, make it something that everyone understands. We're sexual beings. People are right. sexual beings. And Filipinos are having sex, whether people want to admit that or not. So we're trying to have more just honest, open conversations about this. And, um, you know, I mean, I think it's happening, but 
we really need basically everyone to, to be doing this with their own friends, in their own communities, so that we can actually start seeing larger scale change. Right. And how is this panned out? Like once you get the conversation going, are they able to, is, are their mindsets able to evolve to go beyond taboo and the cultural? Um, yeah, the honestly, word? it's a Influence. mixed bag. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. We've had we've had um, we've had some successes, but in in other ways, uh, it can still be difficult. And the, I think that among some of the older women, older older girls and women, there is more of a willingness to be open about um, sexuality and about what people are thinking and doing. But we still find that among young people, even when they have the information, even when they know that um, they can access free non-judgmental services, sometimes they're still not doing it. And I think it's because they don't want to admit to themselves that they're thinking about having sex, that they're right. actually gonna do it. Because that, that's a big step, right? To, to admit to yourself that you're gonna do this thing that society is telling you you shouldn't do. Um, so unfortunately, we're finding that even when some young people have the knowledge and information, they're still going into their sexual relationships without protecting themselves because of that stigma and because of not wanting to admit what they're going to do. Right. It's, it's not even admitting to others, but admitting to themselves. Would yeah. you say that this is religious in nature, like the guilty, religious guilt? It could be. Uh, a large part of that is um, the religious uh religious inclinations that people might have and what they're hearing. But I would say that it's really more conservatism, not necessarily tied to, to religion, because you also see this even among people who don't identify as being very religious. It's more this like cultural expectation of, of what they should be as young women, as girls. And so I think that... Um, I think that the church could definitely do a lot more to make this, um, you know, a more open conversation. But um, I, I actually think that they're not the root of this problem. I think it's really like societal norms and like that, that um, the way that we are in our culture, that it is still at the moment just very, very conservative. But so, but conservative in, in theory only. Right. Not right. in practice. <laughs> Not in practice. Yeah. <laughs> like when they say conservative, but yeah. <laughs> so many jokes yeah. about it. So yeah. uh, what has helped you uh, teach young women and men to face their sexuality and own up to their being sexual beings? Because it will be so helpful because, right? As you said, it's both in yeah. theory and practice. Yeah. Well, we try to make our sessions where, where we teach young people, um, you know, we try to be very um, engaging. You know, sometimes we joke because sometimes teachers or principals from schools will say, oh, can you come and lecture the students? And we're like, no, we can't lecture, but we can engage them. We can teach them. You know, we can have this fun interaction. Um, so being just very open and non-judgmental about um, about sexuality has helped and uh, data has helped a lot because of you know what we just referenced that people say I were conservative ni tayo ganyan all you have to show them is the data on how many unplanned pregnancies we have how many of our teenagers are becoming mothers when they're still children how much hiv is increasing here more than in most other countries in the world so being equipped with that data it makes people, especially decision makers, it makes it so that they can't ignore the problem or they can't just dismiss it. So, you know, it, it makes them realize, okay, actually, we kind of have to deal with this. Right, right. If only we could uh, apply what you're doing there to the whole country and hope it can cut across like all social strata because uh, really in today's uh, day and age of availability and access of information, you still see a lot of women um, not really taking charge of their reproductive and sexual health. Yeah. So let, tell us why it's important to do so. 
it's really important to do so because we should be empowered women. You know, we should take care of ourselves. If you're not going to take care of yourself, you know, who else is going to do it? It's this, I, I feel like there's a lot of um, just reliance on either somebody else solving your problems for you or or just like a resignation na parang abahala na, you know, what happens will happen. Right. And I think it's very important for women to realize this is something you have control over. This is your body and your health and your future. So it's super important that you take hold of it. And there are many ways that you can do that. And I'm really excited to be discussing all this with you now. Yes, yeah, so let's jump right into it. Number one. Yes. So number one, get regular health checkups, in particular, the things that affect women's health. So women's health checkups. Um, and I would just like to note here that, um, you know, there are also specific health concerns that transgender women should also be um, right. bearing in mind. Okay, so, um, you know, first and foremost, having regular pap smears. Um, self-breast exams, mammograms. Basically, this bucket is age-appropriate screening for cervical and breast cancers because that's what you can identify. If you have a pap smear and you have like cells that are starting to multiply and could maybe become like a cancer issue, you're going to identify that early on if you're having pap smears regularly. Um, and just, I don't know, uh, how much your your audience already knows about this, but I was kind of shocked the first time I talked about a pap smear because there's a lot of people who believe that, um, bear with me because this is a little far-fetched, but that when you take pills, hindi daw natutunaw sa katawan, instead they accumulate in your uh, uterus, and then a right. pap smear is like taking some kind of sharp instrument and going in there and scraping it all out. So of course, oh kung, yun ang, kung yun ang belief, right? Nobody's gonna want to get a pap right. smear. So let's just um, make it clear: a pap smear is, you know, it it can be uncomfortable, but it's not really painful. Um, you spread your legs, and a nurse or a doctor will take like a giant Q-tip, parang a giant earbud, and they'll gently scrape. Well, I don't like using the word scrape, but they gently, basically, like rub that against the walls of your uterus to get cells. That's it. Yes. No, right. There's no, nothing sharp that's going to hurt you. Walang sugat. Um, you know, it's usually over within a few seconds. And then they look at these cells under the microscope to make sure that there aren't any weird cellular growths. Um, this is also a way to identify uh, sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea or chlamydia, tulo, right. you know, which is very um, predominant in our in our society. A lot of people have um, these STIs. So very important thing. Um, and then also the self-breast exams, you do that in the shower. You can do it um, by yourself. Um, you can also, you should also be getting that when you get a pap smear, the doctor or nurse should also do a self, uh, a breast exam. Um, and then I think when women are over 40, they say that uh, every year, or every couple of years, you should be getting a mammogram um, to make sure that uh, you don't have pre-breast cancerous growth. Um, I mentioned earlier that we do also have transgender women, so there should also be age-appropriate screening for prostate cancer. Um, you know, also screenings for things like colon cancer, you can get age-appropriate vaccinations. So with sexual health, um, that includes HPV. The HPV vaccine is something that you can get um, at a certain age. And um, then also screening for HIV, screening for hepatitis. Um, these are all really important physical checkups that you can do. Right. Um, and then, you know, just also as part of this, and I think this has become more common since COVID because we all have felt a lot more anxiety and depression, but mental health screening is also very important and something that um, affects your sexual and reproductive health. If your mental state is not in a good place, a lot of the other things in your life will also not be, you know, at their best. So in addition to those um, regular checkups that you should do, also pay attention to your mental health. And I think also basic knowledge about our bodies. It's surprising um, that even the most educated women that I know are really in the dark about 
such things like there was a like a very popular TV host who did say on air something about na ipon yung dugo pag nagpipils and yeah. papano yun lalabas and she was like an educated otherwise modern woman and i also had another colleague who was going to use a tampon for the first time and she didn't know her vagina well enough to know where to insert it and then mm -hmm. so she said do i put it in the hole where the pee comes out no. <laughs> this was like an ex oh unexpected my. so it's really alarming maybe because of the taboo about learning about our bodies and so if you are a modern empowered woman in 2021 please you can google everything yes <laughs> and also i mean we'll talk about this later but know your own body you should right. you should know what your vulva looks like what your vagina looks like, like i mean this is there should be no shame yes. um you know like i i i write some articles um for a local online paper and they asked me to write like I, how do instructing parents how do you talk to your kids about sex and one of the advice pieces of advice i gave is don't call the vagina or the right. penis something else don't flower. call it a true choy or flower <laughs> birdie you know like why it's 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 a body part in the same way that you know you know your arms your legs it, why why would you not know what's down there you know right spend some time getting to know it <laughs> okay number two know your rights regarding consent with a capital c please yes shed so consent um something that is really troubling is that um you know several years ago we interviewed a lot of young people in palawan about the first time that they had sex and the girls most of the time when they were talking about their first sexual encounter what they were describing was rape and of course they didn't call it that but when they say well di ko ginusto pero pinilit niya ako or ang kulit-kulit niya hindi niya ako tinitigilan so pinagbigyan ko na lang you know the, these kinds of situations that's not consensual sex so that is you know someone being forced to do something against her will and so we're trying to set the record straight and let people know that sex is something that you should want to do every single time and right. you know that this is something that um you know you should only have sex if you actually want to this is not something to do to save a relationship to show your partner that you love them like this sex should only be happening if you want it to happen and we try to stress the point also that you can want it to happen once and then not want it to happen the next time. And that's fine. You know, that, that you have to have consent for what you're doing with your partner or partners every single time. Right. And, um, you know, this also extends to married people because there's a lot of, I know, there's a lot of women in our communities who say, na, um, well, you know, hindi, hindi ko, hindi kailangan pagbigyan si mister. Like lalo na kung lasing siya, which of course th that raises other the other issues. But um, you know they were kind of surprised when we said actually no. Even though you're married, you don't have to have sex. You're not like some you know just because you're married doesn't mean that like any time your spouse wants to have sex, you have to do it. Um, right. That's there is such a thing as marital rape, right? And so. Because, you know, a lot of times I think people still have this idea, which I think is very 1980s. That rapists are like people you don't know hiding in the dark. Right. And of course, unfortunately, this does happen sometimes. But the great majority of rapes are actually by people you know. They are it's, date rape. Yeah. It's, it's intimate partner violence. It's someone that you have in your life. It's not usually some random stranger it's usually someone that you have some kind of relationship with. So, you know, just, it's very, very important, um, you know, to, to consent to sex. I really personally, my pet peeve, I hate this Filipinoism of nagpagamit. You know, I've, I've heard usually only older women, but, but I was shocked the first time I heard a teenager saying this, na, oh my gosh. Um, you know, ginamit ako ng asawa ko, or hindi pa naman ako nagpagamit, so pwede akong mag-pills ngayon, or something. You know, it's like, you are not a thing. 
Um, right. You know, one of my colleagues, Amy Perez, um, who also worked with you at Cosmo, she wrote this great blog post. And I still always, you know, one of the phrases, you know, you gamut gamets. You know, you don't gamut people. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, that you know, that's still something that um, we still have to work on. Because if people see themselves as a thing that their partner can just use... That, that's not empowering. That's not that's not helpful or healthy. Um, so definitely wanting to do we having sex only if you want to. And one of the thing that we one of the things we tell young people is, um, can you talk to your partner about what right. you're gonna do? And most of the time they they can't. Most of the time they start giggling. Ay, nakakahiya. You know. Oh my like, gosh. <laughs> you cannot talk to your partner about this. You should not be getting naked together. You should not right. be doing anything. Um, so so yeah. I mean the the biggest issue is like, wag mahiya. Don't let sex be something that just happens to you. You know yes. this is something that you can control. You can decide when it happens and how it happens. And this is absolutely something that women should be in charge of for themselves. Right. So, hindi po tayo gamit. Yes. At wag magpapagamit. Okay, number three. Um, number three, choose if and when to have a pregnancy. And, you know, there are lots of options now, um, many, many more options than, than women probably had before. So if you do not want to have a baby, but you are sexually active, you should be using contraception. And um, it's really important to note that withdrawal or um, ejaculating yes. outside the woman's body is not an accepted modern form of contraception. Right. Yes, no, nah, don't do it. Um, you know, there's a joke na parang, what do you call people who use withdrawal? Parents. <laughs> because right. it's not effective. It's really not effective. Um, no matter what what men tell you, um, there's a lot of men who, who have pre-ejaculate, pre-com, that they don't even know. They, they can't feel it. They don't know that it comes out before they ejaculate. Um, and, and especially for younger people, the first times they're having sex, like if they're not as experienced, they could, you know, suddenly be surprised that they ejaculate earlier than they expected. So this is not a good form. Find the contraception that works well for you. Find what's hiyang. Um, pills are very popular among Filipinas. It's the most used method of contraception followed by the injectable, the MPA. Um, I have an implant. Um, I really like the implant because it lasts for three years and you don't have to think about it at all. Um, I'm on my second one already. So there are, um, we also have IUDs. So there are a lot of um, hormonal methods that you can use if you do not want to get pregnant. And of course, you should always use condoms as well, um, especially if you're not with a monogamous partner to make sure you protect against STIs. So if you don't want to have a baby, use contraception. If you do want to have a baby, you should, um, you know, know your cycle. Try to plot out, you know, which days in your cycle are your most, most fertile days and make sure that you're having sex during those periods. And of course, you know, if you're having lots of fabulous sex with your partner, have it all the time. But um, make sure that you're having it on the days that you're considered mo most fertile so that you increase the chances of getting pregnant. Um, if you're trying to get pregnant and you're having trouble, um, unfortunately, this is still quite expensive. But if you have the resources, there are um, specialty doctors, um, uh, OBs who specialize in fertility. Um, there are interventions like IUI, intrauterine insemination, and IVF, in vitro fertilization, um, that can really help couples who are struggling to conceive um, to help you to, to have your baby. Unfortunately, it is quite expensive, um, so that's not always an option for everyone, but for those who have the resources, it's an option. Um, and finally, you know, if you don't want to get pregnant now, but, um, you know, you think you might want to in the future and you're worried that, you know, your biological clock might get in the way, um, it has become more common now in the Philippines. There are more places where you can actually have your eggs frozen. Um, right. it's, a, it's a minor surgical procedure, basically. I mean, it, there's, it, it, it's not 
I mean, it's not super complicated, but they do. You do take some hormones, and they there is a process um, beforehand. But then a doctor will extract some eggs and keep them frozen, so that you can use them, have them fertilized or um, implanted in future years. So right. you know, this is unfortunately there are so many people who, um, you know, who who just struggle to conceive when they're trying to conceive or never wanted a, a baby and had a contraception failure or weren't using. So, I mean, these things happen, but there are a lot of things you can do so right. that you can plan if and when you're going to get pregnant. Right. Take advantage of technology and do your research. I, I know uh, a few women who have settled because they wanted children. And so they settled on a partner that was probably not the best choice. <laughs> But because of that fear, but now you have options. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Know, absolutely know your options. So number yeah. four, face the music. <laughs> yes. So number four, very important. If you are, you know, if you decide that you are ready to be having sex or you want to be having sex, have guilt-free, pleasurable, safe sex. And you know, there's there's a lot there. <laughs> there's a lot to unpack. Even just yeah. in that statement, right? let's unpack it all. <laughs> let's let's discuss. So, like I said earlier, humans are sexual beings. I mean, that's how we were made. And um, Filipinas are human, and yes. Filipinas are we're having humans. sex. <laughs> yes, um, you know, we we're conditioned to view sexuality as taboo, and we're constantly told that uh, you know Filipinas don't have sex until they're married. And our data shows otherwise. That's not what's, ha what's happening. Um, you know, Filipinas are having sex. And, um, you know, it's unfortunately, like a lot of them are having sex very, very young. Oh. And, um, you know, when we teach young people, we do encourage them to delay sex until they're older. Um, yes. You know, just there's, there's a term that's, that's always used, premarital sex. The, the International Reproductive Health World is actually trying to move away from that term, premarital sex, and instead use the term early sex because a lot of people don't get married. Um, you know, a lot right. of our LGBT brothers and sisters can't. And in the Philippines even, I mean, a huge number of our couples are not legally married. So we use the term early sex. We try to discourage early sex simply because sex does come with emotional mental and physical baggage right right you know it's not um it is fun it is something that should be pleasurable it is something that can bring people very close to each other but it can also cause a lot of problems and we just feel that young people aren't always equipped to deal with those problems because they're complicated and it's you know so so that's why we we do try to tell kids delay until you're older in a more stable relationship right, right but you know and we've talked about you you mentioned you know do is it is it because of religious influences like there are a lot of reasons why someone would feel guilty doing any number of things especially sex and so one of the things that we say to young people if you're trying to decide if you're going to have sex ask yourself do you have religious beliefs or cultural beliefs or just beliefs for yourself that are, you know, that will be challenged if you have sex, that go against what you believe. And if you do, then you probably shouldn't have sex because you're not going right. to enjoy it. You're, you're going to feel guilty the whole time. You're going to feel like, I, oh, I'm letting so many people down. I'm letting myself down. This isn't who I am. This isn't what I want to do. Don't do it. And don't let anyone pressure you into doing it. But if you have decided that you are ready and comfortable and want to be having sex, that's the time that you should, you know, make sure that you protect yourself because having an unplanned pregnancy or an STI is not fun. Um, so, you know, protect yourself and know what you like. Um, you know, this goes to, to what we were saying earlier about people not even kind of being aware of like what's going on in their body and um you know you need to remember that you deserve to have pleasure right unfortunately you know it really because we are in such a patriarchal society and filipinas are kind of like 
expected to just it's it's almost like they're just an accessory to sex. Na parang the the right. the the big thing is for the man to enjoy. Right. Uh, I've been to so many conferences where where you know somebody will ask how many of you have a safe and satisfying sex life, and so few women raise their hands. Right. You know um we we've. It, we, we really have to like tell people like women can have orgasms and you should have orgasms. So, you know, part of this is like knowing your body, being able to talk to your partner about what is pleasurable, what feels good, what do you really not like? Um, and, you know, jumping off from there. Um, I think a lot of people, even if they enjoy sex because of the intimacy or you know, there are a lot of reasons that people like sex, even when they're not having orgasms. So right. we're just kind of like, wow, imagine how much more you would like it if you right. actually had one. Um, so, you know, this is definitely um, a conversation to have with someone's partner, making sure um, that, that they are aware of the things that you like and that you don't like. And it's also about staying safe. You know, once you've decided that you're going to do this and you're enjoying it and it's guilt free, just protect yourself so that there right. aren't outcomes that you weren't expecting or that you didn't want. Right. Um, STIs and HIV. Okay, let's talk about STIs and HIVs and some of the myths surrounding it that are detrimental. I mean, everybody seems to think it's not going to happen to me. I heard a few decades ago, I heard. Um, a male friend say, I don't think I'm going to get an STI because I only sleep with girls who speak good English. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know someone who actually said, oh, I'm not going to get sick. I only, I only go out with like clean girls. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. No. Um, I want to challenge everyone to think about like something that you've done in your life that nobody knows about. Right. and like multiply that like everybody has <laughs> secrets you never know you never know what people have done and they might not even know they could be totally honest and and right. tell you that they um you know don't have any stis but they might not know because a lot of stis um are asymptomatic are, you don't yes. show symptoms for a long time so it's um unfortunately i think you know we again because of the patriarchal culture um, and the macho image, you know, a lot of men in the Philippines don't use condoms. And condoms are the, you know, most effective way of um, making sure that you don't get a sexually transmitted infection. So it's really important that you use condoms, um, especially if you're not sure if you and your partner are monogamous. And, and I mean, right. that's actually something um, that, you know, that's part of the conversation with your partner is, you know, are you monogamous or not? And, um, you know, I really recommend, especially if um, if people have been having multiple partners, but then you decide that you're going to be monogamous, that you both get tested for HIV and other STIs before you stop using condoms. Because, um, you know, it's just better to be safe. Um, HIV is not a death sentence anymore because of the medications, but it is still a serious condition um, and it is, you know, it is something that's better to avoid. So definitely, um, you need to be having conversations with your partners. Um, if you have casual sex partners, just assume that you don't know everything they're doing and always use protection. Right. And in this day and age of dating apps more so, right? Yeah. Or maybe it has Absolutely. COVID has COVID kind of, um, put a stop or like, reduce yeah, no. the threat no, no. unfortunately no. you know it's funny because a year ago i was in a meeting um and someone from the population commission was saying that uh, I, you know we were already in the quarantine and she said oh sana bumaba naman yung teen pregnancy rate dahil nakakulong yung mga bata it has not it's gone up oh my what because basically yeah because People are still having sex. People are still going out. I mean, I don't know what it's like in Manila, but in, in Palawan, during the very strict lockdowns, there was no one on the main roads. But as soon as you started going into the barangays, you know, there are people who were out. And young people are still going out. They are still having sex. The difference with COVID is that they weren't 
able to access services. So they weren't able to get contraception, including condoms. And so you've actually seen an increase in unplanned pregnancies. And um, we stopped uh, providing HIV screening for a few months. And when we thought it was safe enough for our staff to begin doing HIV screening again, within the first week that we were doing screenings, we found two reactive clients. Um, and thankfully, we were able to connect them to, to services, to, to medications that will keep them healthy, keep them alive. But um, COVID has worsened these problems. So it is, you know, while it might be harder to, to, to you know, to find those random or more casual hookups because people aren't going out as much, like people are still having a lot of sex and a lot of them are doing it unprotected. So um, we do, I do expect that there's also going to be a rise um, in our HIV stats once they have all the data from 2020 analyzed. Oh my goodness. For those of us who are not lucky enough to be in Palawan and have access to Roots of Health, what's your advice uh, for all the people who are jahe or hesitant to, uh, where do we even start? Get condoms, buy contraception, uh, get tested. What's your advice for? Um, well, I mean, just honestly, just don't be here. Just, just yes. don't, you know, I mean, like, honestly, even if it's embarrassing, even if you have an embarrassing moment with, with a pharmacist or with right. a cashier or something, so what? It's five minutes of your life. Um, it, it's a little bit harder for young people who are trying to access from a barangay health center because um, there's a lot of, you know, there's there's privacy concerns, you know, it, people might talk, people might, it might get back to their parents, to their families. So I understand those concerns. Um, in Manila, there are um, some great options as well. Um, Likaan Center for Women's Health um, does the same kind of work that we do. They have several clinics in Tondo and one in Quezon City. And all their services are also non-judgmental and free. Um, Family Planning Organization of the Philippines, FPOP. Um, young people and, you know, people can get condoms from them free of charge as well and other services. Um, and then there's a chain of... Um, of uh, healthcare providers called Friendly Care. Um, they're, yes, they're in a lot Friendly of different Care. cities, yeah. And they're great. Um, they do have minimal fees. It's not free, but I think it's not as expensive as if you just go to a private uh, doctor or provider. Um, and they also focus on friendly, <laughs> non-judgmental right. services. Right. So um, I mean, there are a lot of options and, you know, really, now, actually, you know, in, in, in Robinson's grocery store, there's condoms like right by the checkout right. center, you know, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and you know, so there, there, are, there are ways to get contraception and there are low cost contraceptives. Um, DKT produces trust condoms um, and they also produce pills. And I think like their cheapest pill pack is 52 pesos. So right. it's, you know, there are, of course, there's a whole range. There are pills that cost 900 pesos a pack. But, um, you know, you really should have a checkup because um, there are pre-existing conditions in, in some women and girls that make it so that they shouldn't use certain kinds of contraception. If, if someone's a smoker, that affects what she should use. So you should have a checkup. You shouldn't just buy, you know, pills yes. or injectable and do it yourself. But, <laughs> um, you know, do take charge of your health, you know, have that conversation. Um, there are now also some telehealth options, which might be less embarrassing because right, you know, it's just right. free. Um, Dima is, is one of those where it's like an online pharmacy and I think they can connect you to have an online consultation to get a prescription for pills. So there's lots of options. Right. I remember at age 18, in the 80s, because I had read enough to know that I needed a checkup first before I could go on the pill, I went and I went to the Women's Health Care Center in Cobao, ran by mm -hmm. Dr. Florence Yar, and I gave a fake name <laughs> just in case my parents found out. And, you yeah. know, you don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you can if you want you to. Can. You, you know, can. I mean, right. yeah, right. like do what you need to do um so that you don't feel quite as embarrassed but but do you know don't leave this to chance don't let this right. be something that just happens to you like right. you can chart your own future here 
Yes, hindi bahala si Batman. Ikaw ang bahala. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Number five, prioritize self-care. Self-care. Um, so like we said earlier, self-care has become kind of a buzzword since COVID and it has mostly, you know, been referring to your mental health. Um, and, and, and some physical health, you know, like people who are justifying manicures or haircuts, like, yes, absolutely, that's self-care. But, um, you know, you should also just include, like, your, all, your entire well-being, and that includes your reproductive health. That's all part of self-care. So, you know, one part of this is, um, we touched on it earlier, knowing your own body, the issue of masturbation, self-pleasure, um, I think I actually was not raised Catholic, but I think like in the Catholic Church, don't they say that if you masturbate, magiging bulag ka or something like that? Like I, I, I feel like I've heard that before, but it's not true. Um, and not true. especially now with COVID, um, where it there are more risks to being around other people, um, and a lot of people are locked down alone. Some people might have been single when the pandemic started and haven't been able to meet someone. So know how to give yourself pleasure. Um, Amy, again, my colleague, was teaching a group of high schoolers in Palawan several years ago. And, you know, she was kind of shocked because they said that masturbation is only for boys. Huh. And she was like, no, girls can masturbate. And they were like, how? <laughs> so, so Amy was like, uh -huh. I'm not going to give you a demonstration, but, you know, it, there are just so many people, like you said, you know, don't even know what's down there. So it's, it's very important to know yourself, know your body, know what kind of touch you like, know what's pleasurable, know what's not. Um, so that's, you know, that's part of, of self-care. And then also um, another aspect of self-care that is related to reproductive health is also knowing your menstrual cycle you know, knowing your period, knowing what happens to you in your cycle, knowing your ups and downs, and then also just being really gentle with yourself, especially when right. you are in the lows of your period. You know, if you tend to get very achy, your head hurts, your body hurts, or if you just are way more emotional, like, be gentle with yourself during that time. Let yourself, you know, skip work if you need to, take a day off, you know, not handle something that's really stressing you out just like give yourself the space because you know that like this is something happening in your body and you need to just acknowledge it and and do what you can so that you can minimize um the discomfort right so we are sharing some of your um infographics that you use in mm -hmm. roots of health would you like to talk about them briefly sure um so we recently um got two new uh, graphic designers to join our team. Hi, Aaron and Ria. Um, and they're making some beautiful images. Um, and of course, our team had been making some really great images before as well. But I think these are some of the newer ones. Um, that first one was um, with a, attached to a post that we had um, put up on our Facebook page that's specifically for young people, um, Usapang K Palawan. And um, it's it's part of this bigger post that that um, talks about victim blaming, basically that um, the 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 basic questions that you always get when someone is is raped or talking about rape: What were you wearing? Were you drinking? Why did you go out with those people? You know, like all these things that focus on the girl or the woman rather than focusing on the fact that a man raped her. Um, Right. So this this uh, image was basically trying to add to that conversation that like to show this is not right. It's it's hindi mo kasalanan. Um, and this is not how we as a society should be acting. Um, right. That next one I believe um, is uh, is uh, making sure that you uh, don't have an unplanned pregnancy. Basically, um, dapat sigurado um, right. to you know, and like I said earlier, condoms are really important, but especially because we know that men in this country tend to not want to use condoms. And a lot of times girls say that they can't make their partner use a condom. Um, you know, it's really important for, for women and girls who don't want to get pregnant to take it upon themselves um, and use a contraceptive method. Um, right. I love all the, the tagalog. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I think this FAQ was actually um, also from our clinic page, um, uh, kind of touching on what we talked about earlier. There's a lot of misconceptions about what a pap smear actually is. Um, so there's that giant Q-tip that I mentioned. <laughs> uh, uh, so it's it's it, it you know it's not painful. It's thinner yes. than a pinky. Mas masakit pa mag mag swab test sa nose yes. or yes. not even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And, um, now, and then yeah, the final one. Sorry, go on. Oh yeah, women can get HIV. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, because of the fact that um, in the early stages of HIV, it really was spread much more among the LGBT community, there is this misconception na bak bakla lang nagkakasakit ng HIV. Pang bakla right. lang yan, hindi ako magkaka-HIV. And this is completely false. It's completely untrue. It's especially untrue in the Philippines, actually, because of the fact that so many men who have sex with men are not out. So oh they're my. having sex with other men in secret. And sometimes they have girlfriends and they have wives. So th this is not um, uh, uh, an infection that only affects a certain sector of, of the population. Right now, it is spreading more among men who have sex with men and transgender. But in all countries in the world, we've seen that while it starts in that group, Fast forward 20, 30 years, the people most affected are women. Like if you look at the HIV pandemic in, in the African continent, it's women now. Women are the face of HIV. So this is going to happen here as well. And so we just need to be aware, women need to be aware that HIV is also a risk for them. Wow. So just to um, recapitulate in the words of <laughs> my high school teacher, Number one, don't leave anything to chance. Get regular tests, pap smear, self-breast exam. What about the HPV vaccine? Is it is a, it's available. It's available in the Philippines, and it is a vaccine that you can get. Um, unfortunately, it's quite expensive. Um, it it's several thousand pesos usually from a private um, clinician, and you have to get three. So um, it can be hard. Um, and some variations of it are supposed to be given to girls before they're sexually active. So when they're still young. Right. And so there's been a backlash in a lot of countries, not just the Philippines, also in the US and other places, where parents are kind of like, why my, my kid is not going to be having sex. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to give this to my kid because if right. I do, they nila that I'm telling them to go out and do it. So, I mean, this is a whole nother issue. Um, we also try to work with parents on talking to their kids about sex um, instead of just saying bawal and that's it. Right. Um, right. But uh, the HPV vaccine is not as common here yet, but um, perhaps if it becomes cheaper, it will be. And I know that there have been like Likaan Center for Women's Health that I referenced earlier. They had a project with MSF, with Médecins Sans Frontières. Um, and they uh, inoculated, I think, like a huge number, thousands of girls in Tondo, who, who's, you know, they, the girls right. and their parents um, signed them up to get these vaccines to protect them from cervical cancer in the future. And um, it was a huge success because they were able to give the girls like all three doses. Um, and if you Google it online, actually, they had a photo essay that had some beautiful pictures um, that accompanied that project. Right. And please, if you're doing a breast self-exam, please do a vaginal self-exam. All you need is a mirror. Yeah. And what else? Google. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Google is your friend, but be sure to trust only credible sources. So two, know your rights regarding consent. If you're not clear about this, again, Google is your friend. Three, uh, you can choose if and when to have a pregnancy. Not all women have to have children. If you don't want children, that's fine too. If you want children, that's fine too. Four, know you have a right to guilt-free, pleasurable, and safe sex. Emphasis on safe. And five, prioritize self-care. Do you have uh, parting words for the Filipina in after 12 years of Roots of Health and helping generations of Pinais 
take a more active role in determining yeah, I their mean, through. I've had a lot of conversations with individuals who, when they hear about what we're doing with Roots of Health, they say, I sana nasa Manila din kayo or nasa Bohol din or, you know, like these different places. And um, while, yes, I also wish that and maybe it will happen in the future, so much of um, of what we do is exactly everything we've just talked about in this last hour. And it's something that people don't need me, people don't need Roots of Health to do these things. So, you know, I mean, I think my, my um, parting charge to anyone watching is just, you can do this. You got this. Like, this is not hard. And this can make a huge difference in your quality of life and in your future. And our tagline at, at uh, Roots of Health at Ugat ng Kalusugan is, that we, you know, we do all this work para sa magandang kinabukasan. Because at the end of the day, as you referenced, you know, empowerment looks different on different women. Different women can do different things and be empowered. You can be a housewife with eight kids. And if you chose that, like more power to you, that's great. You can be someone who chooses not to have kids or to have one or two or three. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you made an active choice in what you want to do with your life and you know that you put all the things you can into place so that what you want to happen will happen wow i think that's the best way to end our discussion thank you so much amina thanks so and, much for having me uh, i'm flashing the information uh below the screen uh please check if that's correct or please do invite them to follow roots of health and yeah so we it. We have um, rootsofhealth.org is our website, and we're currently working on a, a second website, which will have um, lots of information in Tagalog. Um, and then on Instagram and on um, Facebook and LinkedIn, we are Roots of Health, all one word. So please do give us a follow. And thank you so much again for having me. It's been really thank fun. Thank you. Happy Women's Month again. Happy Women's Month. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. This has been Ask Ms. Mears, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.